there. I'm with Greg Cussell, the executive producer of the NFL Matchup Show. Let's show everybody your phone, your swanky NFL logo on the phone, and uh, all this analytical stuff with football, and it's so measured and analytical. And sometimes in life, you have to flip the script and just go with gut instinct. Well, you know, Ruth, when I came out of college, which was a few years ago, <laughs> I majored in American history and political science. And I had no idea what, the, what I wanted to do when I grew up. Did you think you were going to be a teacher, like a history or social well, I studies I started out teaching? doing that. Yeah. I started out as a teacher and as a coach for one year at a private high school outside of Detroit, Michigan. And then realized I didn't really want to do that. But I had no idea what I wanted to do. So you're at a crossroads going, oh, crap, now what? What, what well, next? Well, back yeah. then, before the days of the Internet, I sent out by mail about a thousand cover letters and resumes. Back in the day when you back, actually mailed back, these correct, things. Correct, yeah, yeah. correct. Uh -huh. in mailboxes, right? Yeah, Do yeah. they still exist, mailboxes? <laughs> Allegedly, right. yeah. And I heard from NFL Films. I sent a letter and a resume to NFL Films. Like a cold, you didn't know anyone, just a cold? Correct. Yeah. Uh -huh. One of my roommates at the time came from the Philadelphia area, and his dad told me about NFL Films. So amazingly enough, I got a phone call from Ed Sable. The founder of the NFL. Founder. Uh -huh. And came in for an interview. And about a week after the interview, I was offered a job. Doing what? Well, at that point, yeah. NFL Films only had about 40 people, as opposed to the 270 we have now. So I was hired as a producer, but back then you spent a year just learning, not really doing anything that was a, a film or... Or, and TV, we didn't do much TV back then. This was 1979. So your degree in social studies American brought... American history didn't yeah. have anything to do with anything. Other than one thing, mm -hmm. I will say this. Yeah. Steve Sable, Ed's son, was a stickler for being a good writer. And at Amherst College, where I attended, all I did was write papers. And so that, I'm sure, helped me. But I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. I got a job offer. When you're 22 years old, you take the job offer. And did you ever think you'd be here 30-plus years since then? No. Because you're a rarity, Greg, because a lot of people, especially now, will stay a year or two in a job, and then they go somewhere else. So for you to be in the same place all this time is a real real rare no, phenomenon. And, and you know what? When I look back, it's one of those things where I can't believe all those years have passed because I still look at myself as... What am I going to do when I grow up? <laughs> but, of course, I think I've grown up, <laughs> and I just happen to have a job in an environment where it's, it's a very comfortable situation, and I sort of never had to make that decision. Now, maybe I'm very lucky in that sense, but I never really had to decide what I wanted to do when I grow up. Now, here's the thing. I'm on a crossroads of my life. I call it the Act 3, Scene 1 tour, where it's like scripting, so it's like... You know, football, with my vast knowledge of football, wink, wink. Well, I was teaching yeah. you today. Yes, you were. I learned snap. I learned that one. Okay. You know, it's very structured. It's very measured, very analytical. Every play is so carefully analyzed. But where in real life do you flip the script and just go with gut instinct or what well, feels right? And is that something advisable? But yeah. I think football, in some ways, what you're saying, football can be a metaphor for life because mm -hmm. it's structured but then on every play you have 22 moving players. So that structure can change. In, in, in a heartbeat. In, in a yeah. heartbeat. So what I'm hearing is it's good to have a, a game plan, however be open for you, But you what need else to be we... ready to audible. Yeah. As the term is used in football, you need to be ready to adjust. And I, I always felt it was important to have a sense of what it is you wanted to do and to have a game plan, but I think that situations, circumstances change, and you do need to be ready to make adjustments when necessary. Now, there's no easy answer to that uh -uh. part of it. At, then, at that point, you may have to, in some ways, wing it and, and give yourself a shot. And you know what? If you don't try, you'll never know. Well, that's the big thing. And I've been here for a long, long time, 34 years. Maybe some people would say, hey, you should have tried something different. They, there's no way to know whether that's right or wrong. But I think if you reach a point in your life and you feel like it's time to change, you'll probably regret it if you don't. And that's all reason to just go right. and take that first and step. And take that step. And sure, there's anxiety. Sure, there's a sense of trepidation, I'm sure, for people who do that. But I think 
if if something is bothering you about where you presently are, you'll be bothered more down the road if you don't take that leap. Huge. Thank you.